you know, this whole camping thing's actually not that bad. I think I could go camping for the rest of my life. <laughs> Get it? Forest? Mm -hmm. Forest? Because <laughs> we're in a forest. You may not be very funny, but you were right about camping. It's a lot more fun than I thought. I can't wait to tell mom and dad all about it when we get home. Let's make another memory to tell mom and dad about. It's just not dark enough for us to really see the stars. Oh wow, so beautiful. Isn't it? Now, if you look really closely, you'll see that some of the stars paint pictures in the sky. You see, there's one with a cup and a handle. That one's called the Big Dipper. Huh, I was thinking. You know, the Bible talks about a lot of things. It's God's word, and it talks about who God is and what he's done. But what I'm wondering right now is, does the Bible talk about stars? I know it talks about how God made everything, including the stars, but does it say anything else? You know what, it sure does. The Bible says in Psalm 147.4, he determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. The Bible also talks more about stars in the story of Abram that we've been talking about. The stars in that story remind us of all the promises that God gave to Abram. Do you guys wanna hear more about it? Definitely. But I can't focus until Jack cleans the chocolate off his face. Mm, yeah. Hey, no problem. I can just go wash up and uh, we can learn some more about Abram. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been camping before? If you see your favorite camping activity, stand up and pretend to do that activity. Ready? I am hiking. Whew. How different is camping from life at home? One thing I had to get used to when I first went camping was not having any air conditioning. Would you believe how many things you and I depend on at home that we miss while away? Every day, we depend on a lot of things, but we don't always have the things or people we depend on. Sometimes, they even let us down. It can be hard to know who you can depend on. Abram, the man in our story, had to depend on God for a lot of things. He depended on God to bring him to Canaan, his new home. God was faithful to his promise to Abram because God is faithful. That's our word up for today. When you hear me say word up, say God is faithful with me while doing these motions. God is faithful. Let's practice. Word up, God is faithful. God had made a pretty amazing promise to Abram. This special promise was called a covenant and it had three parts. We have some motions to help us remember this promise too. Let's do them together. God promised Abram a family, land, and that through him all families would be blessed. God had faithfully brought Abram to his new home, but could Abram depend on God to keep his promise to give Abram children? It seemed impossible. Many years went by and Abram and Sarai still didn't have a child. Maybe they thought God had forgotten the rest of his promise, but one night God spoke to Abram. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Lord, how can this be true? My wife and I still don't have any children. Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Your family will be like that, more than can be counted. Have you ever tried to count the stars before? I have, and I lost count really quickly because there are so many and they look so small here. God told Abram his family will be like the stars. Too many to count. Abram will be the patriarch. Can you say that with me? Patriarch. A patriarch is a leader of a great nation. Abram had a very important choice to make now. Would he depend on God to be faithful to keep his promises? Every day, you and I also have to choose to depend on God or not. If you have believed in Jesus as your savior, you can depend on your faithful God to keep his promises. That means trusting that God will do what he says he will do even when things are hard. We learn about God and his promises in his word, the Bible. 
There may be things or events in your life that make you think God has forgotten about you or that he can't keep his promise. Maybe you have a family member who is very sick and isn't getting better. Or maybe you are lonely and feel like you don't have any friends. Maybe you hear scary things being talked about at home, on the TV, or on the internet. God never promises to take away the hard things in life, but he does promise to always be with you and help you. Even when things happen in your life that you don't understand, you can still depend on God. What can you do when those things happen? You can remember that word up, God is faithful. The Bible, God's true word is full of promises God makes to you and me. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse nine from the Bible says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Covenant is another word for promise. The one true God loves you and he always keeps his word. That includes everything he has promised in the Bible for all those who believe in Jesus. Every day, you have a choice to trust in God's faithfulness. Abram had to make that choice too. What do you think Abram did? Put your thumbs up if you think Abram trusted God and put your thumbs down if you think Abram gave up. If you put your thumbs up, you are right. Abram trusted God. And here's what the New Testament part of the Bible says about it in Romans chapter four, verse three. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Righteousness means being made right with God. Believing in God's promise was the most important choice Abram ever made. One day, God spoke to Abram again. God told Abram, that he and Sarai would have a baby boy. How do you think Abram felt when he heard that? The Bible says Abram laughed. He was almost 99 years old and Sarai was almost 90. He thought they were too old to have a baby, but God was serious and he did something special to show Abram how serious he was. God changed Abram's name to Abraham. Abraham means the father of many nations. His new name also reminded Abraham of God's faithfulness. God also changed his wife Sarai's name to Sarah, which means princess. God promised Sarah would be the mother of many nations. Through the special family, God was going to bring the savior of the world. 2,000 years after Abraham and Sarah lived, God used their family to bring the greatest gift to you and me. To understand why God used Abraham's family to give you and me this gift, you need to know something about God. God is holy. That means he is perfect and always does what is good and true. God lives in heaven, a perfect place. He is the creator of the whole world. He made you and he loves you very much. But you and I are sinners. We were born wanting to go our own way instead of God's perfect way. We think, say, and do things that disobey God. The Bible says the punishment for sin is to be separated from God forever. That's what this dark heart reminds me of being in darkness away from God. But because of God's great love for you, he doesn't want you to be separated from him forever. God sent Jesus, God the Son, to be the savior of the whole world. Jesus was born on earth in Abraham's family. While he lived on earth, Jesus never sinned, not even once. Even though Jesus never sinned, he allowed himself to be nailed to a cross as if he had sinned. Jesus shed his precious blood on the cross to take the punishment you and I deserve. 
Jesus died on the cross and was then buried in a tomb. But on the third day, he came back to life. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Jesus is the Savior God promised to send. Jesus was going to come through Abraham's family. God was going to keep his promise. One day, Abraham and Sarah had some special visitors from heaven. These visitors reminded Abraham and Sarah of God's promise they were going to have a son. Today, when moms and dads want to know if their baby will be a boy or a girl, they have a special picture taken of the baby inside their mom's belly. How cool is that? But this amazing technology didn't exist when God made his promise to Abraham and Sarah. Back then, the baby had to be born for them to know, and Sarah wasn't even pregnant yet. How did these visitors know Sarah was going to have a son? When Sarah heard all this, she laughed. She thought it was so impossible that it was funny. God heard Sarah laugh. God knows everything. One of the visitors asked, why does Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah had a hard time trusting God would keep his promise. Even after believing in Jesus as your savior, sometimes it can be hard to trust God. Maybe sickness, loneliness, or something else makes you think God isn't keeping his promise to always be with you and help you. But if you have believed in Jesus as your savior, you can depend on God to keep his promises. Word up, God is faithful. God has given you his word, the Bible, to help you know him and trust him. It's important to learn what the Bible teaches so you can know God better and know what he says to you. Everything he says he will do, you can trust him to do. As you study the Bible for yourself, you can start to make a list of things God says are true for those who believe in Jesus. Things like how he will help you do what's right, how he will never leave you, and how he will never stop loving you. Learning verses that remind you about who God is help you trust him too. A good verse about God to remember is 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Let's say it together. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Good job. You can depend on God because he is faithful. He always keeps his promises. Reading God's word and learning about who God is and what he has said to you can help you trust God during hard times. Talking to God about your struggles can help too. Talking to God is called praying. You can pray to ask God for help and to ask him to help you trust him even if he doesn't work everything out the way you want. If you are going through a hard time, it's also good to talk to an adult you can trust about it. God often uses other people to help. Trusting God with a problem doesn't mean that God would make it all go away. God never promises you an easy life, but it does mean you can know and trust in his great love for you and his help even when the problem you face seems impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Abraham and Sarah thought they were too old to have a son, but it wasn't too hard for God. A year later, God gave Abraham and Sarah a son. Abraham was 100 years old. They named their son Isaac, which means laughter. God had kept his promise. 
If you have believed in Jesus as your Savior, depend on your faithful God to keep his promises. Let's say the verse about God's faithfulness again to help us remember it. 1 Thessalonians 5:24. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. When you feel sick, sad, or lonely, or whatever problem you might be going through, try doing these three things. Remember God's promises, like his promises to be with you, to help you, and to never stop loving you. Keep reading God's word, the Bible, to learn more about who God is and what he says to those who believe in Jesus, remembering that God always keeps his word. Talk to God about your situation, telling him how it makes you feel and asking for help to trust him. Remember, God might not always make things happen the way you want them to, but he will always love and help you. He is faithful. You can trust him. Word up, God is faithful. If you have never believed in Jesus as your savior, that is the first promise you can choose to trust. Remember how God used Abraham's family to bring the greatest gift into the world? Let's look at it now. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, trusting him as your savior, God promises that you will receive God's gift of eternal life. To have eternal life means that your sins will be forgiven. John 3.15 says, whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Whoever means anyone, no matter what you look like or what you have done. Jesus died on the cross and came alive again so you don't have to be separated from God. If you believe, if you trust him as the only one who can forgive your sin, then he promises you will have eternal life. Eternal life is new life that starts the minute you believe and lasts forever. God, the Holy Spirit will live in you and help you live to please God. One day you'll go and live with God in heaven, God's home, and God will keep his promises to be with you, help you, and never stop loving you. This is God's gift to you. There are three things you can do with a gift. You can ignore it and pretend it isn't there. You can think it looks cool, but never actually open it. Or you can take it and open it. Only by taking it as your own will it really be yours. Will you take God's gift of eternal life as your own by trusting in Jesus as your savior from sin, you can receive God's gift to you right now by believing in Jesus. You can talk to God and tell him what you believe about Jesus and how Jesus died for your sin. You can also ask God to help you learn more about him and his promises and to help you follow his way. God has a lot of amazing truth in his word, the Bible. I'm glad you joined me today to learn about some of it and I hope you keep learning more and more truth from God's word in the future. Goodbye. First Thessalonians 5:24. First Thessalonians 5, 24. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. First Thessalonians 5, 24. First Thessalonians 5, 24. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Do it, do it, he will surely do it.
if God can give Abraham and Sarah a baby, there really is nothing impossible for him. Yeah, that's right. And now, whenever we see the stars, we can remember that God always keeps his promises. Uh, you have your Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking maybe we could look at some promises God gives those who believe in Jesus. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. Oh, I know just the ones to look at. Here are some of my favorites. This one is in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. It says, For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I love this one because it reminds us that God is always with us and he's always there to be our helper. Ooh, here's another good one. Now this one is in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. It says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, I love this one too because it reminds us that nothing can make God stop loving us. And the more we read our Bible and talk to God, the more promises we find. You can also listen in Sunday school and church. As teachers and pastors teach from God's word, you can also listen for God's promises then too. Hmm, well, this has been some pretty uh, intense stargazing. Not again. <laughs> oh, I think it's time for us to call it a night. I'm sure you both will sleep like a log. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again for Good News Club TV. Be sure to join us next time as we learn more about Abraham's life. <sighs> Good night. <laughs>